Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. Linux Newslog is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. You can subscribe uh, if you're watching this on YouTube down beneath here via the uh, subscribe link, or if you can alternatively go to our website over at quicksurf.com. And in the show notes for each and every episode, there's a subscribe to where you can subscribe to MP3, Ogvorbis, or a, a nice video of the show. So with that, let's go ahead and get into the news for this episode. Uh, Over at betanews.com, do you smell the minty goodness? Linux Mint 17.1, Rebecca, is finally here. Christmas is coming, which means lots of festivities are about to happen. Uh, For me, however, the holiday is all about one thing, smells. No, I'm not crazy, although many will disagree. What I mean to say is the smells of Christmas resonate with me more than any other aspect. Of course, the smell of pine trees conjure up images of decorated trees with gifts underneath. But don't forget the smells of cookies, baking, and grandma's perfume. Uh, All of these scents come together to culminate Christmas time. While it's not typically associated with the holiday, the smell of mint makes me as giddy as a child on Christmas morn. Why? Because it makes me think of Linux Mint, one of my favorite distros. And I'm I'm uh, quoting the uh, author here, Brian uh, Fagioli, I think that's how you pronounce your name. Anyway, uh, fans of the operating system are getting an early Christmas present as the release of 17.1, Rebecca, has arrived. So it's a long-term release. It'll be supported until 2019. It comes with updated software, many refinements and features, all kinds of goodness. So go check it out for sure if you are a Linux Mint user. Over at the Tech Report at techreport.com, a fanless Android slash Linux desktop pairs a Snapdragon quad processor with mSATA storage. Embedded PC maker CompuLab has created a tiny Linux desktop based on ARM hardware. The Utilalite 2 crams a Snapdragon system on a chip along with a surprising selection of goodies into a die-cast aluminum chassis that measures just 3.4 by 3.4 by 1.1 inches. Lenaro-based Linux builds will support the machine, which will also be offered with a Google Play Play approved version of Android 4.4.3 KitKat. Uh, The fanless enclosure houses a Qualcomm APQ8064 processor with a quad uh, core and an Adreno 320 CPU, or quad crate cores, and an Adreno 320 GPU. Uh, The chip is familiar from Google's Nexus 4 smartphone, and like in that device, it's paired with a respectable 2 gigs of RAM. Although the integrated eMMC storage is limited to just 4 gigs, the Utilalite 2 supports mSATA drives up to 512 gigabytes and micro SD cards up to 128 gigabytes. So this actually sounds like a really fabulous uh, kind of mini desktop that you can kind of just park on the backside of a monitor and attach a keyboard and mouse and maybe some storage and you're good to go. So I'm I'm curious to see, you know, what comes of this. This, this sounds pretty cool. From MarketWire.com, the Linux Foundation has announced their 2015 events schedule. Uh, the Linux Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization dedicated to accelerating the growth of Linux and collaborative development, today announced its 2015 events schedule, which includes LinuxCon, LinuxCon, and Cloud Open in North America and Europe. Uh, The Linux Foundation Collaboration Summit, Embedded Linux Conference, Android Builder Summit, and ApacheCon, as well as new events for 2015, Open Source Storage and File Systems Conference, Vault, and ContainerCon focused on the rapidly expanding container industry. So pretty interesting. Uh, They are now accepting speaking proposals for 2015 events. 
The upcoming CFP deadlines include a Vault, which is December 7th, Collaboration Summit, December 8th, Android Builder Summit, January 5th, Embedded Linux Conference, January 9th, ApacheCon North America, February 1st, Automotive Linux Summit, February 10th, and LinuxCon Plus Cloud Open Japan, February 12th. And there's a link to submit a proposal if you want to speak at any of those events. Definitely check it out. Um, you know, this is a lot of the stuff I would attend if I could actually get to it in my area or if it was actually hosted here in my area and I could get out time off work to do it. But still, pretty cool nonetheless. From technewsworld.com, there's a uh, blog post here in the Linux blog safari uh, called, Is it time to give BSD a try? Now, I, I, I'm providing a link to this because it does, um, it, it does ask a somewhat legitimate question um, in light of all of the uh, system D stuff that's been going on. You know, there's been a lot of, a lot of people that have been like, hey, we don't want this anymore. We want system D to go away, this, that, the other, other, whatever the case may be or we might switch, or what have you. Um, you know, there's a quote here. says, I think people really need to just grow up, said consultant and blogger Gerard Mack. We get that you don't like System D for reasons most likely imagined, but constantly making posts about threatening to leave is the free software equivalent of a child holding its breath until it gets what it wants. If you are going to leave, just shut up and go already. There's no need for this much drama. I kind of have to agree with him, but at the same time, I think there needs to be some healthy discourse about what is going on with regards to the decisions that are being made. You know, um, anyway, Catherine Noyes, the, the, the author of this post, starts off saying, It's never easy to stand by and watch a relationship in trouble. But that's just how things have been feeling here in the Linux blogosphere of late. First, there's the constant bickering, the growing sense of distance, the discontented grumbling and snide remarks. Next, there are the wandering eyes and intentions and the seeking out of greener pastures. Well, that's partially because people don't like change. Then that's just how it works. For many longtime Linux users, the past few months have resembled the first phase of that progression as the system D inferno has blazed higher and higher. And now, and now, well, we have none other than this, a seemingly innocent slash dot post that appeared recently inquiring about workaday software for BSD on the desktop. Interesting. Uh, you know, I think many of you in the audience know my position on BSD. I love BSD. I run free BSD right behind this door right here right here is a is my home server which is which runs freebsd and i've run you know freebsd as my home server and you know pretty much any time i need to get it done and make sure it gets done you know i my go to os is bsd so linux is great and i like talking about linux and part of the reason why i do this show is to talk about linux and provide interesting links for those of you who like Linux. And I do like Linux and try various distros out all the time. My day job at work is doing Linux development. Um, so, you know, it's not that I don't like Linux. It's just that, you know, for me personally, BSD is, the, is, is my personal solution, at least here around the house. You know, at work, that may not necessarily be the case, but... Uh, Nonetheless, this question is, it has been brought up, and I, I think a lot of people have asked it. You know, if those that are not happy with the way things have been going with Linux, they definitely need to, you know, kind of step back and look around and say, if this isn't working for me, what are my alternatives? It's not necessarily BSD. It could just be another Linux distribution. So anyway, uh, pretty interesting. Definitely check the article out. It does raise some interesting questions. And again, this is all in the interest of, you know, healthy discourse. From itnewsonline.com, Road to Town, uh, Cloud Backo, a fast-growing, uh, wow. Do you hear that? It's dumping rain out. It just literally started dumping rain outside. That's awesome. 
uh, Cloud Backo, a fast-growing backup software vendor specialized in developing server and virtual machine backup software that supports public cloud storage, has announced the official release of version 1.7.2.0 of their Cloud Backo Pro backup software. Uh, this latest version adds support for Linux, which enables system administrators to perform enterprise-grade backup for computers on all major platforms to local or cloud storage. So definitely check this out if you are looking for a backup solution for Linux and don't already have one. From eWeek.com, Hewlett Packard unveils a high-end x86 Superdome nonstop servers. This is pretty cool. Three years after announcing plans to enable businesses to run their mission-critical workloads on x86 systems, Hewlett-Packard officials are unveiling Superdome and nonstop systems powered by high-end Intel Xeon processors. Until now, Hewlett-Packard has standardized its Integrity line of high-end computers on Intel's Itanium line of processors, an architecture that essentially serves only Hewlett-Packard and runs the tech vendor's HP UX variant of the Unix operating system. At the HP Discover 2014 show December 2nd, the company announced the Integrity Superdome X and Nonstop X systems for Linux-based business critical workloads. The servers are powered by Xeon E7 processors. While the focus of the new systems may be on the hardware, it's not the processor that's driving the change, according to Jeff Kyle, Director of Product Management for Mission Critical Systems at Hewlett Packard. It's all about the software. And apparently, all about the software means we want to run Linux or support Linux in some way. So pretty cool. Definitely check it out. Um, that's pretty much it for this episode of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, uh, which you can find online over at quickshift.com. Please do subscribe if you haven't already done so. For those of you who have, thank you for uh, supporting the show by uh, subscribing. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.